Hello, welcome back to Volt Action CP for another video. This time we're doing a painting guide on how I painted my American Infantry in Multicam. So this is what uh, we're going for. Um, I got the painting guide that I did that I used was from the Spectre Operations page. They came out with an awesome uh, Multicam painting guide had all the colors and everything that you need and even suggestions on the shapes to use to uh, simulate the multicam so I started using that uh, by the by the letter the first few guys and then as I went along I started kind of using my own techniques uh, to make the guys look a little more consistent so I'm gonna take their guide and use some, some of my techniques together to create the uh, the camo I'll put the um, link for their guide and their site in the description so you can get it, see all the colors. Uh, they have a nice chart, step-by-step -step, uh, pictures and everything on how to do it. So. so that's the end result, and this is the guy we'll be painting up. Uh, these are the Empress Miniatures uh, U.S. Forces. So they're just <clears throat> you know, straight leg infantry guys, uh, U.S. Army modern straight leg. So. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so as usual, I have my um, wet palette that I'm going to use. The paint's w uh, wet and my glasses so I can see. So the first thing we'll do is we'll cover the model with a Vallejo Green Gray. Okay, now that base coat is done, the green gray. So now I'm going to start putting the camo on. Um, I would suggest using the colors exactly uh, as they're recommended in the in their painting guide. I tried, I didn't have a lot of the Citadel colors, so I kind of tried to approximate uh, with Vallejo stuff. And it, it looked okay, but it didn't look as good as the guy in their guide does. So I just went out and bought all of the colors that they recommended. So... And with everything else, uh, it's better to use a thinner coat, of course, with more layers if you need. But I found even uh, one thinner coat with some of these is fine. Because you don't want it to be too stark. You want it to kind of all blend together. So uh, the next color we'll use is Stracking Green. So this will be for the, uh, the next layer up, which is a green... Uh, green layer even more green than the green gray so the more the more of this you put on the greener overall the whole model will be these guys are kind of supposed to be for Afghanistan Iraq uh, sand countries so as I've been going I've been putting less and less of this on the very first guy I put quite a bit on and he looked pretty darn green so I've been reducing the amount of stracking green I've been using lately and increasing the brown color which we'll get to so I'll go ahead and do the stracking green and I'm just going to do bands uh, irregular shaped bands that kind of wrap around um, the limbs and such and uh, right now and I'll say it now um, the equipment and everything is the multicam, all the pouches, the body armor, everything. So you want to do each one individually. So you don't want to just start over on the arm and just drag a thing across. You want to drag it to the edge and then each one, each piece of equipment should get its own little pattern. Because that'll make it look like he's wearing equipment instead of having a continuous, you know, green line all the way across because then that wouldn't look realistic because each one is its own piece of equipment with its own pattern on it so every little pouch the body armor has to you have to do the multicam on its own on each one of these so that was the main thing I was gonna say so I'll try to keep the band down and just go through the colors now so we'll start with the Strachan green uh, layer
that right, striking green uh, layer is done. So it's pretty subtle, but you can definitely tell the uh, green on there. Try to keep it uh, thin bands if you want a if you don't want a really green model, then keep this layer to a minimum. If you're going for a green guy, then make the bands bigger. So next thing we'll do is wog flesh. This one we're going to use a nice fine tip brush and some water and keep this watery. And we're just going to do little squiggly lines, kind of randomly placed around uh, the model. You don't want to do them too random, but you also don't want to do them too consistent. It's supposed to look random, so and it's hard at this scale to make it look exact. So you know, just you can put two or three in, a, in, a, in one spot here, leave a big gap on the shin, put another one down here. So randomize it. Um, you can use little squiggly lines, dots with this color. So we will do the wog flesh uh, color now. Finished the wog flesh portion of the model. As you can see, there's green stripes on it. I didn't do too many of these. I said I want them, I want these guys to be more brown. So I kept it to a minimum. Um, it's hard to say how much to put on. It's really just up to you how dense you want the pattern to be. I, I like to keep it kind of open some spots. Because after looking at the actual pattern, there are some big areas of the base color that show through. So I've been trying to increase that a little bit as I go. But by the time you get done with all the layers, it can be hard to maintain open spaces of uh, the green-gray underneath. So next will be the brown color. So this will be determine how brown the model is going to be. So I like to put quite a bit of this on. This is German Camo Pale Brown. It's hard to read. I've had this bottle forever. Um, so this one, in the guide, they say large snaking areas that wrap around. So it's, that's what I've been doing. I've been pretty much making one long line that just wraps around and connects over here. Um, maybe a couple of them I'll, I'll let end just out in the open. But Normally I just kind of try to go in between the striking green and the uh, green gray. But I will overlap the uh, striking green as well if I see a spot that looks like it has too much. That's another thing this brown color is good for. If you make a mistake or you make a line uh, too big or, a, or something's not watered down enough like this one here is kind of dark, you can go over it with the brown to cover up the mistakes. You can go all the way. You can even do that at the very end if you see something you don't like. Um, so we'll go ahead and start the German camo pale brown. All right, finished with the German camo pale brown. You can see it's. I covered quite a bit of the model with it, with the sneaking pattern connecting most of the time. So the next thing we're going to do is a dark brown layer, and for that we use Dryad Bark. So the same deal as with the uh, Wog Flesh, get a fine tip brush and make little uh, squiggly lines. And make sure all these lines are always horizontal, okay. uh, or a dot. You don't want to have vertical lines of any of these, except possibly the Wog Flesh, you can get away with uh, some vertical. But all the other little lines are going to be horizontal. So go ahead and do the uh, dryad bark. And they suggest that you keep this to a minimum. This and the next step to a minimum because it, if you have too much of it, it can overpower everything else. So we'll get the dryad bark done. Right, so we've got the dryad bark done. You can see I went light on it. Just a few uh, stripes here and there. Nothing too uh, 
two dents on the helmet. I usually put all the hor all the ones that are horizontal on here in the same direction on the helmet, so it doesn't have you know horizontal on the top, vertical on the side. So, so the dryad bark's done. So the next step is the step that really makes it into multicam, the white uh, little white lines. And before that, it's just um, I mean it looks decent without it, but this is the step that actually sets it off and makes it multicam. So for this step, we use this pallid wit witch flesh layer from Citadel, and we'll just do the same thing. We're gonna get the fine tip brush, get a little watered down uh, pallid witch flesh, and then make random sparse. Uh, horizontal lines with dots. Okay, so finished the white. I uh, didn't go too crazy with it. You want to keep this uh, pretty uh, light as well, not too dense, otherwise it'll overwhelm everything else. So there is the multicam. So the last step for this, we're going to put a wash on it. This is the wash they suggest. Um, Anthonian Camo Shade. This is a green wash. So what it'll do is it'll mute everything, all the hard edges. It'll soften everything up, kind of blend everything together. Now you could use different color washes. A brown wash maybe would make it more brown, but I'm going to go with I'm going to stick with what they recommend, and I've had good luck with it. I'll go ahead and put the wash on, and we'll let that dry, and, and we'll start with the rest of them, the weapon, boots, sunglasses, and skin. Now, so the wash is uh, dry, well, pretty much dry, dry enough for me to continue on. So you can see it kind of uh, toned everything down, blended everything together pretty well. Now, there's a couple of places I made little bits of mistakes, but it's fine. It's not gonna, it's not gonna really stand out that much. So the next thing I'm gonna do on is just start doing the uh, details, it's like boots, weapon, face, stuff like that. So for the boots, um, these guys have like uh, tan color boots. So I've been using just khaki. So I will paint the boots. Now, the boots are only thing khaki, so that's it for the khaki. Now I'm going to paint the weapon um, just solid black. All right, painted uh, weapon black, and I did hit the uh, sunglasses frame black, and that uh, little thing on the side of his helmet there. I don't know what that is. My uh, Knowledge of military equipment stops at about 1995. So, um, and I did paint the magazine with a neutral gray because usually the magazines are gray color, not black. So once all this dries, what I'll do is I'll get the boots, the weapon, with uh, some Agrax Earthshade, and then I will go over the boots with the uh, khaki again just to bring up the uh, color back out and leave the wash in the recesses and then I'll go over the uh, magazine lightly with the neutral gray and then for the weapon to highlight that I will use um, German gray just hit the high the high raised edges um, it adds a little bit of highlight to the black and that's about it. So that'll be it for the guy, and then we'll move on to the skin. Okay, so there's that. Highlighted everything. Brought everything back up. The khaki back up. Did the weapon. Um, so now we'll do the skin, which 
is the part I hate the most. I kind of I've refined the way I'm doing it. Used to put a darker base, try to build up, but now I'm going even lazier way, and I'm starting with the uh, highlight flush. It's very light, so I'll paint all the skin the highlight flush, and then I will mix a little bit of that uh, palette of witch blush with this and just go over the nose and the chin the, the raised areas and then I will take a uh, wash of Reichland Earth uh, flesh shade and then go over everything with that so pretty much the wash is going to do all the work I'm going to paint everything light the wash will seep down it'll put uh, shadow and depth to the skin because I just can never seem to build it up normally with paint layers. So I'm going to start light and put the flush wash on and let that do all the work. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Alright, done with the painful part, the skin. So you can see it's not... Uh, perfect or professional but it gets the job done I suck at painting skin so it is what it is um, next I'll do the glasses for that I just use a blue and I mix a little bit of white in with it and then I kind of do the top half of the regular blue and then a little bit of white just along the bottom to make it look like it's reflective and then I'll get a, some of the red uh, some red paint any old red paint and just put a dot inside the scope there so I'll go ahead and do that now all right so there we go glass is done and I can't zoom in on the dude here but glasses I uh, got the little red dot in there so he's pretty much done so that's the finished uh, finished model so now I'm just going to do the base, and I just do a real simple base. Uh, the other guys I did were all desert, but I'm trying to keep these guys more neutral. So like a, just a brown colored base. So I can use them anywhere. Uh, any kind of terrain. So for that, I use a tan earth. And I just go over it with tan earth, and I put the agrax on top. And then I, once that dries... I go dry brush over it with the tan earth again. And then I take uh, uh, sand yellow, I believe it is, and just dry brush over that, go around the edge. And then I dry brush a tiny bit of Iraqi sand over the top of everything just to lighten it up a little bit. And then I put a uh, dry grass tuft on it. So I will go ahead and get started. Uh, on the, on the base. Alright, so we're finished. Um, here's the uh, completed model. Pretty simple really. These guys actually are paint up very fast because there's hard, there's virtually no highlighting, no building colors back up uh, after the wash. There's no, I mean there's webbing but it's the same color as the uniform. So these guys are actually really fast to paint up. So there's the uh, Grenadier. And as usual, here's the rest of my force of Americans. Uh, the different colored bases are just some things I bought to differentiate um, different people in the squad. Like this guy here, aside from pointing, which is obvious, uh, all my sergeants point if I can. Uh, different colored base, but sergeant, um, I've got a DMR slash sniper with the M14, and if I run him as a sniper team, this is the guy that goes with him, or he can just be part of a squad. Um, I got a couple of, uh, that's not the right one, that's just a regular carbine. I got several carbines, um, just another carbine guy. He's actually a team leader, so if I break the squad down, he'll take over one team, and squad leader will take over the other. I do have a couple of LMGs, which are Brutal and Spectre. 
it's almost unfair to take two of these in a squad, but um, if you need to even the odds against a horde of uh, militia, then take a couple of LMGs. I actually have a last guy here, not painted yet, but kind of messed up his neck, so I'm going to try to take his head off and fix that. Um, I also got here Medic. So here's the Medic. This Medic pack. He actually saved the guy's life last night. Uh, radio Man. So he'll go with the squad leader. He'll be long range comms. I still need to put an antenna on this, but there's the radio guy, RTO. And then just, you know, various other guys. Carbines, a couple more uh, grenade launchers. So there's that. So there they are. That's my uh, infantry squad so far. I actually have four more coming in. Uh, I got a, another sniper team and a guy with an AT4 coming in. So that should finish out this squad. Uh, I might have to get another squad though so I can if we do any big conventional type games then I'll have more guys. But Anyway, I hope this um, guide maybe helps someone and learning how to paint multicam is actually quite easy and, and quite fast. So thanks for watching this video and we'll be back next time.